A mandatory breakup? No time with mom. Princess Anne might have lived in luxury, but she didn't always get what she wanted. Keep watching to find out who she was barred from marrying and more. Some of us might think that being a princess is an amazing experience. But for Princess Anne, being a royal was something that she didn't always enjoy. She was never really allowed to stay out of the public eye, despite her wishes to do so. While Anne grew up before the time of rampant social media, she was still pursued by gawkers on a regular basis and was exposed to the public at an early age. Express even noted that Anne once said that it was only human to wish for a private life. Anne's only solace came in the form of boarding school, where she was granted a bit more privacy, but her time in the spotlight never came to an end. Here's something that might throw you off. Princess Anne might be Queen Elizabeth's second child, but she is nowhere near close to the British throne. Yes, her older brother, Prince Charles, is the heir apparent, but between Charles and Anne lie 15 other people who would take the throne before the Queen's only daughter. So yes, despite the fact that Anne is the Queen's second child, she'll never be allowed to take the British throne. So why is Anne so far down the list? Despite being the Queen's second-born child and one of the most hard-working royals? As it turns out, it all has to do with her gender. Anne was born well before the Succession to the Crown Act was passed in 2013, meaning that her two younger brothers, Prince Andrew and Prince Edward, and their children surpassed Anne in the line of succession. So, despite being known as the most dedicated royal when it comes to the attendance of public and charitable events, she'll never rule. It's a pleasure and a great honor to welcome to Wogan Her Royal Highness, Princess Anne. Princess Anne's childhood was incredibly unique, and while many of us were used to having our parents around all the time, the young Princess Anne was not really allowed to spend that much time with her mother, Queen Elizabeth, in her formative years. Anne was just two years old when Elizabeth took the throne. The Queen was still very green at the time, and instead of having time to spend with her two young children, she was navigating her role as monarch. As such, Anne wasn't allowed to rely on her mother much and instead was largely raised by nannies. To say that Anne's childhood was incredibly different from the common experience is an understatement, and when she was still very little, her mother went on a six-month-long tour unaccompanied by the children. It is a small example of just how distant Anne was from the still-reigning monarch. The issue of royal security has been in the news as of late, and while it may seem frivolous, the members of the royal family are protected for good reason. When it comes to Princess Anne, she does not attend official engagements or take part in any official duties without police protection officers present. Why would someone so far away from the British throne warrant such prominent security when in public? For Anne, the answer strikes close to home. Anne was the subject of a kidnapping attempt back in March 1974. She was returning home from having attended a film screening when Ian Ball, a man previously not connected to the princess, tried to pull her out of her vehicle. Well, he said I had to go with him. Um, I can't remember why. Ball managed to take hold of Anne's arm, and when he demanded that she come with him, she retorted, not bloody likely. So I wasn't going anywhere, put it that way. <laughs> Despite her quick thinking and unfazed demeanor, Anne later told members of the press, if there had been more than one, it might have been a different story. Required security, therefore, is a smart move. We live for royal drama, but Princess Anne not being allowed to marry a man she loved due to religious reasons hurts our hearts. We have to go all the way back to the 1970s to tell this story, and it involves none other than Andrew Parker Bowles, Camilla Parker Bowles' first husband. As it turns out, Anne and Andrew were quite the item back in the day, and as noted by the Mirror, the duo were quite taken with one another. However, when it came time to discuss the possibility of marriage, Andrew was not seen as a suitable option for the princess, and it all had to do with religion. As you may know, the royal family is heavily attached to the Church of England, and due to Andrew's status as a member of the Catholic Church, a union between them would have been considered improper. As such, Anne and Andrew called it quits. She went on to marry her first husband, Mark Phillips, and Andrew went on to marry Camilla. Given that both of their marriages were unsuccessful, it certainly makes you wonder if things would have turned out differently if they'd been able to tie the knot. Speaking of the royal family imposing restrictions on Princess Anne's love life, Anne was not able to get married in England when she tied the knot for the second time. 
According to Hello Magazine, Anne and Sir Timothy Lawrence couldn't get married in the country because of the Church of England's protocols. The church did not allow for previously divorced people to get married, and as a result, the couple traveled to Scotland in order to go through with their nuptials. Anne's first wedding may have been a celebratory affair, but her second wedding was a very small gathering of about 30 people. Anne had just finalized a high-profile divorce at the time, so her choice to have a small ceremony does not come as a surprise. She and Lawrence exchanged their vows in front of royal family members as well as Anne's two children, Zara Tyndall and Peter Phillips. The couple remain together to this day. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about the royal family are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.